Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, this is this is a video presentation for the literature assignment of uh, Intelligent Control Systems course at UDAFT. Our group number is uh, 31. My name is uh, Hong Kai Zhang. Today our topic is about dynamic mode decomposition method, also known as DMD. Um, let's get started now. So first, let's give a very short definition about DMD. Dynamic mode decomposition method is a popular data-driven method to extract a low-dimensional representation of a high-dimensional system. Today, our presentation will discuss four topics. First, we will discuss two main theoretical issues. How does DMD deal with uh, nonlinear characteristics? And how does DMD make uh, high-dimensional dynamic systems more suitable for control? Uh, I will cover these two topics. And after that, another member of our group will show you a practical research example with DMD, which has an interesting algebraic extension. At the last, we will have a short discussion to compare DMD with other model or the reduction methods. Okay, uh, first let's focus on question one. How does DMD deal with the nonlinear characteristics? To understand that, we must have a look at the procedure of DMD method. So you mentioned DMD is a data-driven method. So for the very first step, we will collect data from a time snapshot of our experiment. Then we organize those data into two matrices, X and X prime. As you can see, it's here, X and X prime. We call X the data matrix and X prime the output matrix. As you can notice here, X prime is actually just formed by moving every column in X, one column left, and add your last data point at the end. After that, we will use literature, uh, we will use least square regression to find the best fit operator A through A equals X times X prime times X cross. Here, X prime is the output matrix we had just mentioned, and uh, uh, X cross represents a more parallel pseudo, pseudo inverse of our data matrix. Then we can use this A as a linear approximation to predict future states. So it sounds very simple, right? Just collect some data and uh, calculate an inverse, then you get it. But how does it work? Why why it is useful? Here we can give we we, we cannot give the strict mathematical proof. But the main idea here is that if you have enough data, you will have a large enough data matrix to get a very high dimensional linear approximation. And it will successfully represent the long nonlinear characteristics. So that's that's the basic idea. Basically, you use a very high dimension linear operator to represent your nonlinear characteristics. So that's how it deals with this uh, nonlinear uh, property. Okay, now let's move to the second question. How does uh, DMD makes a high dimensional dynamic systems more suitable for control? So basically there are two main ways to do that. The first one is to introduce in a truncated SVD decomposition uh, to reduce the dimension of data matrix X. To figure out that, we have to take a close look of how DMD method calculates that uh, linear approximation, approximation A. Remember that we want to calculate the more parallel uh, pseudo inverse X cross of data matrix. To do that, we will do uh, SVD decomposition of X, then we introduce a truncation value R. By doing that, we can take the largest elements in sigma and make them square to sigma tilde. Then we can calculate the pseudo inverse X cross. After that, we will be able to calculate A uh, also a bar as a, as a approximation of A. However, as you can say, the calculation of this could be super expensive as A will be N times N matrix, where N is a dimension of your data point, which could be quite large in most time. In order to solve that, we can project in our X to a linear subspace with dimension R. Why R? Because in this way, the projection can be easily done by using U tilde from previous SVD decomposition, and we could also capture the most important characteristics in our data matrix. Now our data matrix become a R times M minus one matrix, and our A becomes R times R matrix. Normally, we will have R much, much smaller than N, 
In this way, we successfully reduce our model, model's order from N to R. This will certainly make our model more suitable for control. So that's the first method. Okay, the second way to solve this question is called dynamic mode decomposition with control, also known as DMDC. As you may notice, all DMD method we mentioned before is actually about autonomous systems, which means that it doesn't have any control inputs. But since we want to control the system, it would certainly be better if we can also have control inputs under consideration. When we are trying to build this model, uh, the fundamental assumption here is, is that we have the whole data of our control inputs. With that, we will form a new dynamic model, x prime equals to a times x plus b times y. The matrix y looks like this here, as you can see. So it's, uh, it's basically the same as the data matrix S, as we said before, it's uh, just just all your control inputs. So the main procedure for DMDC is quite same as DMD, but we will form a new data matrix omega by stacking X and Y together. Then we have the same story. We will build a truncated SVD for new data matrix omega and another SVD decomposition for output matrix X prime. The reason why we need two X SVD here is because that we are not, uh, is that because the omega and X prime are no, are no longer in the same linear space anymore since we add control inputs to the data matrix, we change it, uh, the, uh, the dimension of omega. After that, we can just calculate the approximation of A and B. So these are the two main ways to make a high dimensional dynamic systems more suitable for control. The first one is to reduce the model order by the truncated SVD and the data projection. The second way is to include in control inputs to get a more accurate model. 